Hi, so I wanted to come on here unscripted. I had made a video earlier, I took it down and wanted to replace it with this one where I'm talking with you and sharing my thoughts on issues and things um, that I just, I wanted to put into a single video um, for you to really solidify um, a lot of this. Um, and um, so I want to start by saying, it's time we change the environment of adoption. It's time we address uh, the ethics of adoption practices. Uh, it's time we call for adoption reform. And I've made a, a list of four or five points um, to help you understand why um, I have been talking quite a bit about adoption trauma as a real thing. Um, it is a set of specific experiences that come from the adoption process. And these experiences are traumatic to those of us uh, who are relinquished from our mothers. Um, we have to then acknowledge that there is a cascade of multiple losses of uh, family from uh, our cultures, from our racial identities, from our countries, from our uh, ancestry and heritage. Um, there are those of us who are adopted transracially and uh, go through, who go through intercountry adoptions. Um, so putting it together, um, it needs to be uh, acknowledged as well that all of this occurs before the adoption actually happens. That as infants and young children, we lose our voices and we lose our sense of who we are. Um, and what happens uh, because of this adoption trauma, where we now understand that trauma is a full body experience uh, that uh, our bodies are thrown into the state of survival and self-protection. It impacts our relationships. It impacts our relationship with ourselves. Um, the brain relies on instincts, fight, flight, freeze, and fawn. Uh, we call these trauma responses. And when left unchecked and untreated, uh, this trauma cycle gets repeated over and over every time that we're triggered and uh, our sense of safety is threatened. Uh, so like, why is this occurring? The problem is Adoption is overwhelmingly seen as a joyful act of being saved. And the truth actually is that adoptees are four times more likely to attempt suicide. In my own family, I have had three of my adopted siblings die by suicide. I have written about this in my blog. I have recently given an interview with The Guardian. I have put this in videos on YouTube. Um, we have to acknowledge that there is a suicide crisis in the adoptee community that is not being acknowledged. And this is unacceptable. 
So the truth of adoption has to be uncovered. We all have to come out of this adoption fog. Um, as Alexander Den Heyer says, when a flower doesn't bloom, you fix the environment in which it grows and not the flower. So I invite you to join me in being ridiculously curious why adoptees are dying by suicide when adoption is meant to save us. Why are we twice as likely to develop addiction issues? Why are we over pathologized in therapy and diagnosed with virtually everything but trauma? Why is adoption trauma not being recognized and acknowledged, leaving us unseen and unheard for decades? So to bring this together, uh, I bring it back to saying again, it's time we change the environment of adoption. We have to look at and address the ethics behind the adoption practices that have allowed these deaths by suicide to occur for decades, which begs the need for adoption reform we have to, and this is probably most important, we have to support adoptees. Uh, we have to give them uh, a statement of solidarity that they deserve to live and thrive and heal from their traumas so they can be seen and heard and validated and reclaim and reconnect with who they truly are so they can lead the lives that they're meant to. So I'm hoping that at the very least, the, this gives you something to think about and perhaps even move you to want to engage and advocate and support the adoptee community to help the effort to save adoptee lives.